A quarter of a year ago, three months ago, I talked about the police state tactics of the Obama administration, and I laid out the case. And I was attacked for it. That's fine, I'm attacked all the time. But you're hearing more and more, aren't you? If you're watching Fox, if you're watching some conservative websites, if you're listening to conservative radio, all of a sudden, other people are picking up on this. Certain meet, uh, uh, media outlets, uh, Circa, the new outlet, which is excellent, and so forth, starting to pick up on the, on the disastrous activity of the Obama administration. You're also hearing the word Watergate. I forget about Russia. Watergate as applies to what the Obama administration did. Worse than Watergate. I'm telling you what I told you three months ago. This is the scandal of the century. This is the scandal of the century. The Democrats are in full obstruction mode. The media, for the most part, in a pure Praetorian Guard mode as they circle the wagons to protect their precious Obama administration. And the more this is pressed, the more they talk about Russia. Fine, but we got to get to the bottom of this. Samantha Power unmasked. This is the Wall Street Journal. Barack Obama in 2014 made a large to-do about his reforms of U.S. surveillance programs to protect the privacy of Americans. We may soon learn how that squares with his administration's unmasking of political opponents. The House Intelligence Committee Wednesday issued seven subpoenas as part of its Russia probe. But the three most notable demanded that the National Security Agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation turn over records related to the Obama administration's unmasking of Trump transition members. Now, it wasn't long ago when the Wall Street Journal was mocking Mr. Nunes, the chairman of this committee, and mocking me, as were other outlets. But this is a result of his work and, frankly, as a result of what you're going to see in a little while. We know the U.S. intelligence agencies routinely eavesdrop on foreign officials who are talking about meeting with Trump aides, much less routine is for political appointees to override privacy protections to unmask or learn the identity of U.S. citizens listed in a resulting intelligence report. The new subpoenas seek details of all unmasking requests in 2016 by three people. Former NSA advisor Susan Rice, you've heard me talk about this. Former CIA director John Brennan, you've heard me talk about him. And former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. Samantha Power. Now that's a curveball. And that's what happens when you press investigations that are legitimate investigations, not nonsense in search of nonsense, a legitimate investigation. Interesting, as UN ambassador from the United States, she had no reason to unmask anything. She's a diplomat. And by the way, she served on Obama's Senate staff, too, when he was a senator. Democrats claim Ms. Rice needed to unmask names to do her job, though this is questionable, given that she wasn't running counterintelligence investigations. They have a better claim with Mr. Brennan, although I would argue not so much. But Ms. Power's job was diplomacy. Unmaskings are supposed to be rare, and if the mere ambassador to the UN could demand them, what privacy protection was the Obama White House really offering U.S. citizens? The House subpoenas should provide fascinating details about how often Ms. Power and her mates requested unmaskings, on which Trump officials, and with what justification. The public deserves to know, given that unmasked details have been leaked to the press in violation of the law and privacy. Meantime, we learned from Circa News last week of a declassified document from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which excoriated the National Security Agency for an institutional lack of candor. The court explained that Obama officials had often violated U.S. privacy protections while looking at foreign intelligence, but did not disclose these incidents until the waning days of the Obama administration. More on that in a moment, because you may recall on April 20th, Landmark Legal Foundation filed an amicus brief, an amicus filing, because we didn't know any other form of legal instrument to file uh, in front of this FISA judge, saying, hey, judge, are you aware of all this stuff that's going on? Of course she was. But we wanted to give her a legal device upon which to act. And she acted a few days later, ruling uh, basically that the matter's not before her anymore, so there's no need for us to file anything. Little did we know until the other day the reason was she already slapped them down. She already slapped them for what they had done. 
Now, you won't hear most of this on CNN or MSNBC or NBC, ABC, CBS, or any of the rest of it. They're busy chasing uh, windmills because they want to chase windmills. Well, let's start at the beginning or near the beginning. March 5, 2017, Fox and Friends. I had done a radio show of two days before on March 3rd where I laid out on this Thursday my exhibits, my case, based on the publicly available information at the time, thanks mostly to news reports. And at the time, the media didn't realize it was laying out the case not against Trump and Russia, but against Obama and domestic surveillance and police state tactics, which is exactly what took place. Anyway, let's take a look, little look at this. I'm, it's called, I, I've got to build the construct. I've got to build the foundation to get to a further point. So let's take a look at this from three months ago. Go. The evidence is overwhelming. This is not about President Trump's tweeting. This is about the Obama administration's spying. And the question isn't whether it's spied. We know they went to the FISA court twice. The question is, who did they spy on? The extent of the spying. That is, the Trump campaign, the Trump transition, Trump surrogates. And I want to walk you through this, the American people. Exhibit one. Exhibit one. This is all public. Head Street. Two separate sources with links to the counterintelligence community have confirmed that the FBI sought and was granted a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act court. This is spying. Uh, in October, giving counterintelligence permission to examine the activity of, quote, U.S. persons in Donald Trump's campaign with ties to Russia. Let me go on. This isn't me. They say the first FISA request, sources say, name Trump, was denied back in June, denied by the court. Mm -hmm. But the second was drawn more narrowly and was granted in October after evidence was presented of a server possibly related to the Trump campaign and its alleged links to two banks. Now, sources suggest that a FISA warrant was granted to look at the full content of emails and other related documents that may concern U.S. persons. Now, I know people are hung up with Trump's word wiretapping. Well, how'd they get access to this server information? Does it really matter if it was wiretapping, electronic surveillance, or whatever it was? Exhibit 2, The Guardian, a well-known right-wing British paper. Here it is. Uh, quote, The Guardian has learned the FBI applied for a warrant from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court over the summer in order to monitor four members of the Trump team suspected of irregular contacts with Russian officials. Keep in mind, this is during a presidential election. The sitting president, the incumbent party, is now investigating the presidential candidate of the Republican Party and his campaign to some extent. The FISA court turned down the application asking FBI counterintelligence investigators to narrow its focus. According to one report, the FBI was finally granted a warrant in October. Exhibit 3, McClatchy, another well-known right-wing newspaper. <laughs> Here they have the agency's headline. FBI, five other agencies, five other Obama administration agencies pro possible covert Kremlin aid to Trump. The FBI and five other law enforcement intelligence agencies have collaborated for months in an investigation into Russian attempts to influence the November election, including whether money from Kremlin uh, covertly aided presidential-elect Donald Trump. Two people familiar with the matter said the agencies involved in the inquiry are the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and representatives of the Director of the National Intelligence. 